All right, guys, who broke the robot? Hello everyone, I'm a broken robot. When I analyze and review games on this channel, I usually try to stick to indie games or lesser known titles. That way I can encourage my audience to go check them out and play them for themselves. While games like Hotline Miami, Katana Zero, and N Plus are some of my favorite video games of all time, the title we'll be discussing today, while still a shining star in the indie game landscape, is far from my favorite video game of all time. It unfortunately never reached its full potential due to a mix of a rushed development, unrealistic sales goals, followed by an abandonment and revival of the game's development. This game is none other than that of Pixel Piracy, developed by Chondro Delta and Reed Logic Game Studios and released on April 23rd, 2015. Before we go into my critique of the game, let's discuss why I think Pixel Piracy is still a perfectly great game that just fell short of what it could have been. Pixel Piracy is a game with no story and a very loose sense of direction. When you first spawn in, you'll customize the look and traits of the player character that will take on the role as your pirate crew's captain, and besides eliminating the four pirate legends, which are marked on your map by a red skull icon, there isn't any major objectives of the game other than raiding ships, exploring islands to fight wildlife and the locals, and occasionally stopping at friendly islands to customize your ship, recruit sailors, and occasionally blow off steam. Friendly islands are the main area where you'll trade goods, sell loot from your adventures, and buy equipment and upgrades for your crew and ship. The tavern is easily the most important building that can be found on an island. You'll have the ability to recruit sailors. Some recruits will have certain traits and skills. Speaking of skills, for being a somewhat rushed game, Pixel Piracy has a relatively elaborate skill and perk system, with skill points being added to both your player character and your crew as they level up. You can buy perks and equipment for your crew at the bookstore. While a heavy knowledge of the perk system isn't necessary to a Pixel Piracy playthrough, vital tasks that your pirate crew can't complete, such as using cannons, cleaning the ship, and basic ship repairs, can only be acquired by buying perk books or looting them off rated ships. Some of the lesser important buildings you can find on friendly islands are weapon and food shops. Food shops can be important as if you're at an island without a harbor master and need to buy rations for your crew, a food shop is a great alternative. The weapon shop is a good place to buy and sell looted weapons. In my playthrough experience, I usually just sell any weapons I loot and upgrade my crew's weapons through raiding enemy ships, but everyone will have their own strategy. The final and easily most entertaining building located on friendly islands is the harbor master. Here you can sell looted ship parts, but most importantly, can buy parts, upgrades, and decorations for your pirate ship to either improve your combat effectiveness or simply improve your crew's quality of life. You can also buy things like sails and ship upgrades that increase your sailing speed while you're out at sea. While you're out on adventures on the open ocean, you'll encounter hostile pirate crews ranging from unarmed rowboats to full-blown galleons with multiple cannons and crews the size of Mia Khalifa's body count. While in ship-to-ship -ship combat, there are multiple things to keep in mind that can be applied to your crew both on land and at sea. First off, you'll be not only managing your crew during combat, but also your own player character. I highly suggest dividing your crew into color-coded groups, so that way you can pick apart enemy groups without risking the majority of your crew. Also, as you progress through the game, you'll encounter larger ships and far more developed crews with higher grade weapons and equipment. Use things like cannons, perks, and group tactics to stay ahead of this difficulty curve. It's also imperative that you micromanage each part of your crew or else you'll risk hurting one another by accident during combat. The biggest example of this is when your crew has ranged weapons or are manning cannons. In these situations, they are just as likely to accidentally kill your own crewmates as to hit the enemy. When the gun smoke settles and the screaming dies down, you can either destroy the enemy ship and loot it for parts, or you can destroy your own ship and simply take over the competitions. We'll discuss shipbuilding in a moment, but as you progress through the game, it will become far easier to simply take over former enemy ships than bother constantly rebuilding and upgrading your own. When you're not out in the high seas taking names and bites out of pirate booty, you'll be on uncharted islands that can be home to everything from forgotten buried pirate treasure to tribes of hostile islanders. Almost all islands have an interactive item such as an idol, meat hook, or totem pole. After interacting with the object, multiple things can happen. Now, unfortunately, 9 out of 10 times, it's just gonna spawn a bunch of enemies to ambush you and your crew. But in some of the rarer cases, money or high tier loot will spawn. It's important to remember that no matter if you prefer ship raiding or island hopping, your character is always on a permadeath system, so it's vital to manage not only your player character, but your crew's vitality. 
Some players might prefer to have a large crew to do the fighting for them, while others might prefer to have a well-trained and well-armed crew to use as backup in combat. While I could try to squeeze out some fun facts or extra small niche details the developers threw in for pixel piracy, unfortunately that's really it. Besides the initial opening of designing your player character in your first ship, the gameplay loop is not only repetitive, but tragically short. Players will dock at a friendly island to sell loot and purchase rations and gear for their crew. They'll follow this by either raiding ships or storming islands until either their crew runs out of rations or manpower, only to return to a friendly island to sell the loot they collected on their adventures and purchase more crew, rations, and equipment. Rinse and repeat. While there is the endgame goal of destroying the four legendary pirate crews, for most casual gamers, they'll be bored and gone long before they've even leveled up enough to take on pirate lords who basically in-game are just over-glorified larger versions of the same pirate ship that you've been fighting since the game started. Now's the part of the video where we unfortunately discuss the critical flaws that held back pixel piracy causing it to be just a mid-game instead of a great game. So, let's start out by addressing the giant flying eyeball in the room. Yes, Pixel Piracy is directly inspired by and designed by the same development team that created Terraria. When ReLogic had published Terraria in 2011, they weren't expecting it to be the breakout success that it ended up being, so lead developer Andrew Spinks wanted to rapidly develop a spin-off title to help ReLogic cement itself as a premier publisher and not just a one-hit wonder in the gaming world. While there are some articles buried deep online about some of the early versions of Pixel Piracy being a proto-Terraria spin-off with bosses and multiple biomes, a combination of developer burnout and a rushed development in general, the Terraria spin-off transformed from a Terraria-esque RPG to a simplified pirate simulator game, with code and game designs being copied and pasted directly from Terraria's game files. When Pixel Piracy was first released in Early Access in 2013, reviewers were quick to note that the game simply felt like Terraria's art style surgically inserted into a hollow pirate simulating game. When the full release hit Steam in 2015, many of the same critiques of Pixel Piracy were not addressed, and it was clear to fans and critics alike that the extra two years of development were not utilized well, with many of the flaws such as a short but repetitive gameplay loop, lack of story and direction, and most importantly, a lack of general things to do were not addressed. While the two years of polish did add in some interesting starter scenarios, such as your crew being twice as likely to develop scurvy or less friendly islands, this didn't alter the game that much. After the initial hype of the ReLogic brand name faded away, Pixel Piracy's player count dropped like a lead balloon. It definitely didn't help that by January of 2016, nearly a year after the full release, no updates or major bug patches had been implemented. While there was talk from developers of adding in factions and multiplayer to help spice up Pixel Piracy's gameplay loop, the player numbers simply weren't there. And less than a year after release, on February of 2016, ReLogic officially announced on Twitter that they would be temporarily halting all updates for Pixel Piracy. It wouldn't be until January 30th, 2023 that seemingly out of nowhere after seven years of silence and neglect, a minor content bonus and a major bug patch were added to the game files, with it being revealed on Twitter that a handful of developers of Pixel Piracy were feeling nostalgic and in their free time had spent the last seven months working on Pixel Piracy behind the scenes for a final send-off update. Now, to be fair to ReLogic, in their defense, this update did far more for the game than the entirety of the two years of development between 2013 to 2015 ever did. The update fixed many notable bugs, such as crewmates randomly spawning in the ocean or vendors spawning in with no buyable items, but tragically many notable glitches continued and will likely exist within the game forever. In terms of content added, developers added in events, which consisted of small periodic events that range from crewmates hosting a mutiny if they're unhappy to fog forcing your sailing speed to be slower. While this addition of a dozen or so random in-game events helped to break up the slow boring pace of the gameplay loop, events are too far and few between to make any notable impact on the average playthrough. When push came to shove, while Pixel Piracy is a perfectly fine game for the price tag attached, it feels like it's stuck in limbo. While Pixel Piracy has sat in development hell for over seven years, ReLogic's devs have simply chosen to abandon the title for the mediocre pirate roguelike game that it is. Maybe in the future a sequel or an upgraded version of the game can fit into the shoes that it failed to fill, but for now if you need a simple time waster game the Pixel Piracy is right up your alley. But what do you guys think? Am I not giving ReLogic enough credit or is Pixel Piracy truly a far cry from what we know that the Terraria developers could have made? If you've stuck around this long, please take a moment to like and subscribe. 
If you subscribe, you won't miss my future video essays and reviews on whatever topic of the week has piqued my interest. And if you give this video a like, not only will you be helping me out personally in the YouTube algorithm, but you'll be helping me out. So thank you so much. I hope you all have a great day. When in doubt, think what would Blackbeard do and stay cool.